Your business revenue should be like a puppet, supported by several strings. That way, if one revenue stream were to stop, you would still have other means of support. Whereas, if you were to sever the arm of the puppeteer, the show is over. Sorry. Is anyone else watching the new season of Happy? Yeah! It's amazing. Hi, I'm John, and this is Bogdan. In 2015, we gave up our day jobs and started our own freelance creative business. Join us on our journey as we figure out how to earn a living as artists, introduce you to those we meet, and share what we learn along the way. Today, we're gonna to talk about the importance of diversifying your income as a creative. For those of you who have made it in your art careers, or those of you who are retired and watching this vlog from your yacht, this is probably not something you'll need to hear. Though, if you would, call me later. I know creating income streams is difficult, and of course, no plan is gonna work for everyone. But step back for a moment, grab your last bank statement, and look at where your monthly income comes from. How many sources of revenue do you actually have? I saw some research quoted that said that millionaires average seven different revenue streams. If you're doing that now, great, keep it up. And please tell us how you manage that in the comments below. When I look at our business, we have some personal savings back from the day job that are tied to the stock market. We have our art sales. We shoot some commercial business to business video and photography. And we have seven online platforms that we're not really using to their potential. Four streams sounds good until you realize that our online income doesn't actually earn us yet $300 a month. So functionally, we're down to three. And of those, two were decimated by the stay at home order surrounding the COVID-19. So we're currently down to one source of income, which is a finite sum in savings that depends on the stock market. And how's that stock market doing? Now, I, I can't fix the market, and I can only wait out the coronavirus. But I know that there are some really positive steps I could be taking today to improve and expand on other revenue streams, even if it takes a while for them to start to pay off. Now, what does that look like for a creative? Let's say you're a fine arts type. You make and sell art in your studio and you make enough to scrape by on those sales and your spouse's job. Where do you start to expand your revenue streams? Do you have a plan for approaching galleries? Do you submit your work to online competitions and exhibitions? Do you reach out to publishers and magazines? Do you do the art fair circuits? Do you have agreements with consignment shops? Do you specifically promote individual works on social media? Do you have a way for someone to purchase your art online? A website, Etsy shop, Squarespace, something like that. Do you take out ads on Google, Facebook, etc.? Do you pay for print advertising? Do you teach courses? Have you written a book? Do you blog or vlog? Do you send out a newsletter? It's so easy to get lost in the weeds with all those possibilities or to get burned out and just give up. And the worst part of those choices, not one of them, involves making better art. So the reality is that we may well have too many options. It used to be simple. You paint, a gallery sells your work to wealthy industrialists, and you keep right on painting. Yeah! As lovely as that sounds, that world is gone. So do a little survey of what the world looks like now in a post-COVID-19 economy. List out the revenue options available to your creative career and start with baby steps. Come up with a checklist or a spreadsheet to mark your progress. Devise some measures by which you measure your success. We put a cap on our spending for art calls. We apply to the ones that make the most sense until our budget runs dry. There's not one right way to do all of this, but it all needs to be done. Map it out 
take small steps towards your goals, review your success along the way, and give yourself a break if you mess it up now and again. So what would my ideal revenue stream be? A nest egg of savings for that next unexpected crisis in the world economy. Perhaps 30% of my income from direct sales of art, 25% from business to business photography and video, 20% of my income from online sources, 10% maybe on publishing, that's writing, blogging, blogging, 10% from teaching courses and seminars, and maybe 5% from grants and prize money. So if I think I need $50,000 to live, that breaks down as follows. Selling direct art to buyers, $15,000 or $1,250 a month. Commercial photo and video, 25%. That's $12,500 or $1,042 a month. Online sources, 20%. That's $10,000 or $833 a month. Publishing, 10%. That's $5,000. That comes to $417 a month. Teaching online courses or teaching webinars and things, 10%, $5,000. That's also $417 a month. Grants and prizes, that's 5%. That's $2,500 a year or $208 a month. So is that less frightening? Figure out what a dream income would be that's not frightening and take baby steps to get there, adjusting all the way. Look around for those creatives who are killing it and see how diverse their income streams appear to be. One of my new heroes is Stefan Van Quick, an artist, or should I say, an art brand in Berlin. At a young age, of course, to me, everybody seems young. Stefan has developed an art career, a design practice, he has a magazine, a gallery, he hosts exhibitions, he represents other artists. He writes books and articles, blogs, he's a YouTuber, he teaches online and has a public speaking career, and now he hosts a television show. I reached out to Stefan after reading an article that he wrote, and I mentioned that it would be great to interview him for this vlog. And to my surprise and delight, he wrote back instantly and said yes. Here's a bit of what he had to say. Tell me about what you do. Yeah, sure. I think the best way to explain this would be like in a chronological manner. Okay. So um, uh, initially I wanted to be an artist. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, well, I, I've been painting since I was a little kid. And uh, so I started painting a little bit more serious when I was around 16 or 17. Mm -hmm. And then came the time to go to the university. So I basically went into the more marketing and graphic design path, which was great because it really gave me a business mindset that I could later adjust to my art career. Mm -hmm. Then I went over and, and actually studied some fine arts a little bit later. And uh, I, I, by that time, I really started to take my art career really, really seriously. So uh, I, I started exhibiting, I started uh, wanting to show my art, I wanted to, to sell my art, but the problem was that no gallery wanted to exhibit me because I didn't have any previous gallery experience. So I was kind of like in a, in a cycle of some sorts sure. where I couldn't get the exhibitions I thought I deserved because no gallery wanted to give me any, any visibility. Mm -hmm. And then I, I just went and, and did it myself. Mm -hmm. I, I started organizing my own exhibitions, calling out my friends, exhibiting together. And then I started an art magazine on top of that to kind of like uh, promote and distribute the artworks and, and the stories of these artists. That mm -hmm. turned into a gallery then that turned into a, a public speaking career and you know uh, all the work that I've done with the magazine interviewing people made me want to interview more people which became like a TV show and uh, yeah it's like kind of I, I, I don't know what's next but uh, <laughs> I think for now it's it's okay um 
I guess one of the things that, that struck me early on when I, when I was uh, Googling you is the, just the diversity. Have you built your art career on purpose? Has it been just uh, happenstance? Or have you, do you, are you really specifically trying to diversify? Are you just taking advantage of opportunities? Uh, it, uh, my, my personal art career is a little bit complicated mm -hmm. because uh, I almost approach it as, as, as more as a fashion brand than, mm -hmm. than an, an art career per se. I, I am always very attent to uh, market research and, and since I'm a very fast artist, I can produce art very quick and see the response of the audience very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I usually go in the direction that the public takes me, you know, mm -hmm. so I paint what the public wants to buy in a sense. Sure. Uh, and then I phrase it as, as an exercise in mass consumption uh, transformed to the art world. So uh, I'm always experimenting and always trying new things, but I'm always very, very, I, I always play, pay p close attention to what my audience wants. Mm -hmm. And uh, it happened, for example, with my series of pineapples. I knew that pineapples mm -hmm. were starting to show up a lot in fashion brands. So I decided to do pine pineapple paintings. And since I saw that they were being sold at such a very, at such a fast rate, I just did more. Mm -hmm. So give them what they want. That's magnificent. So doing that kind of research has, has everything to do with it. It's not just, you're not just painting what you love necessarily. Yeah, I, I think that I love painting what people want, yeah. you know? Uh, so yeah, I'm still painting what I love. There you go, great. So you also represent other artists, right? So you're kind of an agent, uh, uh, an, an art dealer and yeah. uh, what, what do you look for in a client? And I usually work with artists that I've known for a longer while. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I found ways to help other artists. Since I'm going to be close, working so close with the artist, the mm -hmm. artist needs to, we need to vibe in a, mm -hmm. in a very unique way. You know, I, I have an artist that I exhibited 20, 30 times, and I have an artist that I exhibited once, you know, mm -hmm. so you can mm -hmm. imagine why. So uh, it's a match between the artwork. I need to know that I can sell the artwork. It must be easy to sell. It has to have like commercial appeal. Uh, the artist needs to be like utterly professional. Uh, I, I need the, the CVs sent on time, the photos mm. properly taken. You know, I need the artist to be uh, another person helping me row the boat forward not not just like a liability I, I cannot have like an artist that that expects me to do all the work while they sit uh cocktails by the, by the hotel pool you know right. that that doesn't work for me so i i need art that it's easy to sell and hardworking individuals magnificent having said that i mean we've got the the coronavirus uh what in the world is that doing to all of us, to you, to any suggestions you'd have. How's it going? I don't, to, I, don't, I don't want to sound like a jerk, but it's not doing much for me because I was already selling a lot of art online. Online. Uh, mm -hmm. I literally wrote a book on the topic. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I don't want to say I was prepared because by no means anybody could be prepared by this. Mm -hmm. But I had a foundation put in place that allowed me to to keep on doing my activities without having to change uh, an absurd quantity in my direction. I think that uh, it, it's a very good time for artists that might not have a, a plan in state, you know, to take the first steps mm -hmm. to, to, to setting up online strategy. Excellent. I mean, I guess the, it may be too early to tell, but uh, have you noticed dips? Or is is the is online going to bring us through this, uh, or is it too early to tell? Well, uh, the art world has always been like severely slow in taking up any form of innovation. You know, a, mm -hmm. lot, of, a lot of online galleries simply don't have their inventory online, don't have a buy online option, don't mm -hmm. have anything like that. Uh, I, I don't know if, if we're gonna go 100% uh, digital from here. 
Uh, I would like to think that this whole pandemia is, is something that's going to pass and we're going to be able to have exhibitions again sure. and art fairs and everything. But e even if it passes, you know, it's not in anybody's my main priority to, to host super large events uh, like an art fair. You know, I think that's going to yeah. take even longer. So uh, I, I think that uh, going online will be very crucial to waive it until you can uh, go back to, to hosting uh, exhibitions. Uh, I just hope a lot, not a lot of galleries or artists mm. uh, are unable to make it through this and have to close their pa practice. I do think that art, the digital art market is here for for staying mm -hmm. and I think that it's a very good opportunity to artists start playing at the same level field as galleries Thank you me. know because uh, the visibility is the same mm -hmm. you know you got uh, I, I, and I think that a lot of galleries could actually learn a thing or two of independent artists that have been owning the internet for almost a decade yes, yes. selling their work living their career without any intermediary and I think that galleries need to learn a thing or two about these kind of artists right now. Are there any kind of pitfalls that people need to look out for online? I mean, I've heard horror stories, but uh, people with their design showing up, uh, being stolen online and showing up in China and there's nothing they can do about it. I, I think, you know, they can steal a, a print a copy of a design from you, but they cannot steal your art career. Right. So. Uh, yeah. Just make yourself a visible art persona out mm -hmm. there, you know, even if you have your artwork in places such as Saatchi or Fine Arts America mm -hmm. that have, you know, their brand name in front of yours. Uh, be sure to have like a very clear social media and online personality and presence. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people can contact you directly as well and not just rely on on again intermediaries you know mm -hmm. it's so easy nowadays to just open a, a online shop you know and sell your own artworks directly mm -hmm. you know you don't need to be like a, a web developer for that right uh so it's like just do it yourself and then invest heavily in, in letting people know who you are you know tell your story um show up on video explaining your art uh, what i've seen a lot that i found lovely was like um a live Instagram uh, studio visits mm -hmm. or or gallery shows or, or artists talking about their artwork or museums interviewing artworks artists I just find it like a very interesting format to to kind of uh, uh, network and communicate with the artists mm -hmm. you know. is there anything new and exciting that that is on the horizon that you can that you can see Oh yeah, I know. I, I, it's not like a technical tool or trend, but I, I I am very excited about people noticing the real value of the arts. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, mm -hmm. now everybody's quarantined and they're just like uh, enjoying live concerts from mm -hmm. from their favorite musicians on Instagram. You know, their their local museum is giving guided tours. Uh, 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 the film archives are opening their archives online for people to see. Mm -hmm. So it, it is very clear that the first uh, responders to, to this pandemic was, of course not, but like in the front lines were, mm -hmm. were the culture to entertain people in these times of, of dire need. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that compared to other global catastrophes, you know, art becomes very insignificant and unimportant. But in this specific global catastrophe, um, art is playing like a role that none of us could expect. So I would like to see um, this becoming a, a new love affair of the audiences with the arts. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see more people uh, supporting financially artists and arts in general. And I'm not talking about uh, 10 million euros to the arts. I'm talking about real people mm -hmm. subscribing to, to Patreons and, and memberships mm -hmm. from young creators, stuff of like one, two, three, four euros a month. But but everybody helping really um, small and independent creatives, you know. What's next for you? What's next? Uh, huh, huh. 
Well, I guess um, I'm gonna invest a lot of time in doing videos now, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like helping people take this 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 jump towards uh, uh, making a career online. Mm -hmm. um, I I got the hundred photos exhibition that will be opening uh, later this week. Excellent. I think more maybe early next week, uh, depending on on how the the last parameters work. Um, and I, uh, well, with Artistopian Poor, my community, uh, we just mm. launched our new website where we're going to be selling limited edition prints of up and coming artists. Excellent. So mm. people become uh, members of our club. They mm. get a lot of benefits and a lot of knowledge and a lot of goodies. And in addition, they get the opportunity to offer limited edition prints for sale. And now what we're going to do with those limited edition prints is create a collector's club, per mm -hmm. se. So art lovers can subscribe for a monthly fee and get in their post every month a different artwork with a little story of the artist and a little bit uh, uh, an interview with the artist and some extra content uh, about the artwork. Magnificent. So it's kind of like our way to connect people with the arts and each and support the artists as well. Uh, all the the artworks sales from the website are completely commission free. So all the profit goes to the artists. So uh, mm -hmm. you know these are like the techniques that I was talking about about how to help a larger amount of artists mm -hmm. in a more indirect way. You know, because I I cannot really manage more than ten artists at a time personally mm -hmm. so I, I kind of developed this strategy so I can help dozens more of, of art artists great so if, if somebody uh, does want to get in contact with you and find out more about what you do uh, how are the ways they can reach you the best way to talk with me directly would be at uh, at Instagram so, so it's Stefan dot okay. quick then uh, you can also visit the website who the fuck is Mr. Dot Quick Dot Art, which explains all mm -hmm. the different characteristics that I have, or just visit a Supermog or Artist Hobby and Poor Club, mm -hmm. or an artist website. There's it's like 15 different websites that I manage at the current time. So uh, just hit me up on Instagram is the best thing. It's it's the easiest thing. I want to tell you how much we do appreciate this. Uh, we've. We, you're, you're one of my new heroes, and I, I'm going to be watching what, you, what you're up to continuously, and uh, it sure has been great chatting with you. Appreciate your, your willingness to do this. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Uh, you know, uh, I'm a very open person, so anybody that hits me up on Instagram with a specific question, I'm like, yeah, man. It's like, yeah. Excellent. Uh, I, it's, I just want to be the mm -hmm. kind of art consultant that I wish I had when I was starting yeah, off, so. Yeah. Hey, Bogdan, uh, can we go ahead and get the picture taken for this? Because I, I need to put it up on, online and promote it. Absolutely. Let's do it. We've opened accounts with, I think, seven different online sales platforms in an attempt to sell our artwork and photographs to you, our adoring fans. And I've heard others say that it's best to master one platform before moving on to another. And that makes sense and is no doubt based on irrefutable data-driven experiential evidence. So we don't do that. It just feels like more is better. I've reserved the right and the duty to make my own mistakes along the way. And there's such a value in that journey. I figure that as long as I don't do something really, really stupid, it's probably okay to learn as I go. Now having said that, we opened up our Etsy shop several months ago and we've been terrible about keeping up. But that's okay. We've taken some baby steps and we have the tools to fix this. And unfortunately, we have nothing but time during the coronavirus. So this is good news. Remember that Etsy is a search engine, and so there are peculiarities to this platform that we all have to accept. They use algorithms to determine how searches are ranked, 
So just having stuff online is not enough. Etsy gives priority to those shops who post frequently and show movement. That means that I shouldn't dump a whole bunch of content to my Etsy shop all at once. A much better strategy is to add something every few days so that movement is evident. Pinterest functions the same way and so do several other platforms. Etsy also announced that they would be giving priority to those shops that offer free shipping. I know that made a lot of people really angry and I understand why. I figure that Etsy is in business to make money and I could never find the volume of customers Etsy can provide me. So we need each other. If that means I have to jack up my prices a bit, then I'll do it. They're not trying to hurt my business, but rather trying to make both of us more money in the long run. So I signed up for the free shipping and I got on with my day. Another issue that comes up time and time again is the importance of great photographs when selling your work online. We're professional photographers as well, and we have a steady stream of business owners who have learned the hard way how important it is to have excellent photographs to promote their products. While we appreciate their business greatly, let's face it, most anyone can learn to take a good photograph. It all boils down to lighting, focus, and time. You can buy or build a light box or photo set for next to nothing. Just flood your product with enough diffused light to highlight the colors and details and a tripod to keep your camera steady you're good to go. You should also set your camera to take really large photos because you can always shrink an image down to fit your needs. If however your picture is not big enough, you're done. Stretching images make them, makes them fuzzy or pixelated or both. And if you have the budget and don't have the time, hire it out. There are lots of professional photographers out there. You should also consider other shots of your products. If they're three-dimensional, get the side shot, get that back shot, whatever might answer customers' questions. Our art is two-dimensional, but an extra picture of that work in a frame or the work shown in a real setting in situ, behind a couch or over a fireplace, can really give people an idea of what the work will look like in their home or office. Etsy offers room for multiple images with each listing. Take advantage of that. You should also take advantage of any place that allows you to add descriptions. This is hard, I know. Any artist will tell you that often what makes the sale is the story. A collector will enter the studio, stop in front of a piece or circle back around to a painting, and as soon as someone tells them the story of that work, they buy it. That's hard to achieve online, but we do have a description box. I know a lot of people hate to write for fear that it will sound stupid or disingenuous, but it does in fact get easier with practice. Take full advantage of any chance you have to fill out your listing with words. I usually take time to write a few lines when I'm getting an image prepared. I get a new piece of art, get a high resolution image made, fill out all the information about the size and the date and the title and all that. And then I write a short description and some keywords. Doing that early saves me from having to freak out every time I see a blank box and a blinking cursor. Whatever strategy you use, get that description written and provide some possibility of a personal interaction with your online customer. As I mentioned, Etsy is a search engine, so equally important are those keywords. Use an online keyword generator if you need to, or do some research as to which words are trending. There are loads of tools to help you with that. Don't go crazy though. If the process is too difficult, you're gonna lose interest and joy. You can always come back later and improve your keywords as a maintenance task. Let's face it, trends shift. There are words that would be great today that were not popular when I opened the shop several months ago. Finally, I have to keep reminding myself that Etsy is not like the Kevin Costner movie. Just because I built it doesn't mean they'll come. We have to find ways to promote our Etsy shop outside the platform and funnel potential customers to our listings on Etsy. Sorry, that's just good business. I'd love to hear your advice, your horror stories, 
or your huge successes with Etsy. Be sure to leave your comments and let's get out there and crush it on all those online sales platforms. They're not gonna sell themselves. If you liked what we did today, please like and subscribe to our channel. It helps us build one of our revenue streams. Hit that bell to get notifications. Help out on Patreon if you can. And have a great week. Bye.